How's it going everybody? Today we got firewood deliveries to make and firewood to create. Let's get busy. Alright guys, so this first delivery is for two large totes of mixed hardwood, i.e. Uh, I think it's going to be ash. A lot of this stuff, I believe, was split back in like June, um, and it was already standing dead, so it should be good. Just going to uh, fire up the tractor here and get it loaded up. All right, guys, so this order is for two totes of ash, like I said. Uh, so we're gonna come in here, we gotta move a couple of these log effects full of cherry to get to the ash. One back here, and then one over there. Um, that's kind of the annoying thing about the way that I currently at least have the woodyard set up is that I'm typically finding my, my older, more seasoned wood, for the most part, you know, is like in the back. So I have to move the more recently split stuff to get to it, um, and it just takes, you know, a little extra time. I've, you know, tried doing it, like filling it up in, in order, like from left to right or front to back, that way I always have access to some older stuff, but it just ends up, always, seems like it always ends up getting buried. So here's the first tote that we'll use. I am impressed with how well these bags um, stand up when full. I kind of thought that they would be a little less stable, but it turns out they, you know, on the pallets, if you fill them up properly, and that bag rack definitely helps. Uh, they actually stand up pretty, pretty darn well. There's that. We'll load up these two totes in a jiffy and be on our way. This delivery is only like seven miles away, so it's not all that far, which is nice. We got a couple coming up that might be a little a little far. That's all right, as long as they're willing to pay. All right. There we go. All right, let's load up this first tow. So, it's always kind of hard for me to figure out the best angle to show you guys this, but a lot of people think that I really like destroying the totes, and it's hard on the totes doing it this way, unloading them, like flipping them like this, but if you do that, like what I just did, by just gently flipping it down on its face, and then coming back, and not you don't want to put your forks into the pallet portion of the tote. I don't know if you can see right there, but I have my two forks through the actual cage, like the bars of the tote. And then you can go in and flip it over very gently and just kind of pick it up. And the tote, absolutely no damage was done to this tote. You know, and the fact that I'm now not even cutting the faces out, it just provides even more rigidity. And then you just put it down, like I'm doing here. And I can even, you know, flip it over with the forks. Back over. And then we're gonna come down. And just gently pick back up. I mean, this isn't like 
rocket science. You don't have to go a million miles an hour. But there's a tote, one tote, first tote, dumped. No problem, no damage. It's really not that hard. <laughs> and guys, we're just gonna do the exact same thing here. Over. Gently flip it. So that it stays, the, the key is having it stay balanced. These forks are a little tougher because they're longer. These are my 48 inch forks. My, uh, my 32 or 36 inch forks. Oh, there was a, I think there's a mouse in there. But yeah, again, just basically flipping it over. Gently. This one's going a little sideways. There we go. Okay. We're just trying to win any races here. And there we go. This one, I grabbed it on two different levels. So it's being a pain to come out. There we go. delivery got uh, some cash here now we're going to load up my second delivery that I got to do around one o'clock uh, it's for one small tote um, so I'm just gonna get it loaded up and then get the truck out of here that way it's done and I could just hop in and go do it when the time comes
Okay, next on the list, um, obviously the Easton Maid is now back. Chris and his father came over yesterday, and we spent all afternoon cleaning everything up, getting it back in place, um, and I even got a tote of wood split. But the thing that makes this wood unique, if you look at it, look at all these pieces. They're like really nice little candle matchsticks, and that is because I threw in the new seven way pizza wedge. So this is the Easton made seven way pizza box wedge. The uh, vertical wedges are a little bit closer together than on your standard um, seven way box wedge, which is over here. You can see the spacing is a little wider. And guys, I didn't make a video cause I just had a couple of rounds. Um, I didn't even anticipate it filling up that whole large tote, but this thing is the real deal. Um, I really like it. I think if you're feeding it nice straight wood, um, it obviously makes really nice sized pieces um, a lot smaller than uh, what the standard seven way was making. And this stuff is what my customers are looking for. Like really little, you know, almost like bundle size pieces of wood. Um, so I'm super excited. I wanna get this tote out of here, get a fresh one under and then We'll get to cutting and making some wood.
right guys, that did not take long at all. Um, about 15 minutes total time. And that uh, includes me moving around the cameras and stuff and coming to uh, stack up the front here to kind of hold, help hold the wood in because this is obviously one of the totes with the cutout in it. Um, but I mean, look at the size of these pieces of wood. Like these are perfect size for bundles. Um, really like th this is the perfect size wood for all of my customers. All of my customers really like this small stuff. Um, even the ones that heat with a wood burning stove or a fireplace insert, they all complement and enjoy the smaller splits because you can just pack it in tighter if you're heating with it. It's easier to handle. Um, so anyone can, can you know, use the wood or, 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 you know, load the wood into the, whether it's a campfire or a fire pit. Um, so I think this pizza wedge is gonna be the ticket. It even powered through some pretty gnarly knots. You might've seen, it definitely kicked into like the second stage a couple times, like it tore through. You can see this knot right here. Um, you can see this is a good example of a pretty gnarly knot that it tore right through. So now I'm just obviously, you know, these totes with the um, cutout in the front kind of make a little bit more work in that you got a more falls out. Um, but, you know, all in all, so much faster than hand stacking and filling these totes up. And I do like kind of stacking up these last couple pieces just because uh, it kind of makes a roof to um, shed the water off. Now, it looks like Chris just came back. He showed up, uh, he took the bladder that we had all the sawdust going off of the brute force firewood processor into an IBC tote bladder. He took all that sawdust for his chickens, his bedding. Okay, Chris just showed up. He brought me back my IBC bladder of sawdust. This was just split on the pizza wedge. What do we think? Initial first impressions, go. You've had no time to think about it. <laughs> I mean, this is all pretty, pretty nice stuff. This is really close to what we like to split and sell to the population. Yeah, this is money. I, Th I this is the good stuff. I don't see any like monster pieces in here. No. There, there aren't. I, the only way that that pizza wedge makes a larger piece is on the very outside, the far right and the far left. Uh -huh. If, you know, the round is, is larger diameter, I just probably did like, I don't know, maybe a 20 inch uh, diameter piece. You know, so the outside can make some longer flat, you know, like shingles, but really not all that bad. And as long as you rotate it, you're you know able to keep all the pieces very uniform i mean yeah. i am no, they look great. super happy and there were a couple knotty pieces you know ash can be knotty especially those bigger ones on the inside and it just powered right through them it's not oh, boneless okay. skinless yeah but oh we haven't talked about the new stickers we have not oh <laughs> guys boneless skinless firewood you've heard it here on dude ranch diy we were the first ones to say it other channels have, have have said it. It's okay. I give I give them permission to say it. But we have boneless, skinless, firewood bundle stickers. I'll put a picture of it right here because I don't have one on me right now. But they are awesome. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them because I just have them in the garage. But let me know if you want one. And I'm not going to Paul Bunyan. We're not going to Paul Bunyan. So we're not going to see you there. Otherwise, I would hand them out there. But uh, they're cool stickers. Uh, again, there's... You'll see them right now. So that's cool. All right, what are you doing today? Uh, I gotta go back home. I was just dropping off your uh, your empty bladder now. Oh. But I got some of my own firewood to stack. I got- Yeah, you do have cut. a bunch of firewood I, to stack. I got a lot of stuff to do. Stuff, scrap to burn, you know. Yeah. The whole works. Yeah, all right, well, get after it. All right.
right guys, there's the second delivery of the day. Empty truck. That's gonna wrap it up. All right guys, that's probably gonna wrap up this video here. Um, we got a lot done today from uh, cleaning up scraps, you know, um, to making firewood, to doing two deliveries. Um, and we got another delivery lined up for tomorrow. Um, I just was chatting with the gentleman and he wants the wood delivered in the tote. So I'm gonna bring the tractor with me. And uh, he said he goes through a lot of campfire wood with his kids and all the neighborhood kids. So um, <clears throat> he's hoping that I can just keep bringing him full totes when he empties one out. So that's awesome. Um, I'm really excited about this pizza wedge. I think the size wood that it's making is perfect for my customers, especially, you know, guys like I just mentioned, just doing campfires, you know, with kids and stuff. Super easy to handle. Um, so that's great. I'm excited to keep using it. Uh, the Cormiti right over there is a very, very valuable tool to have. It's really nice having, um, you know, two machines, one that I can go throw the bucket on, another I can have pallet forks or a grapple. Um, just makes my life a little bit easier, less uh, swapping back and forth. So um, as always, guys, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it. Um, go check out CormitiUSA.com backslash JP to find out more about the uh, Cormiti machines. And uh, that's going to be it. Any questions, comments, or feedback, throw it down in that comment section. But for now, I'm Jake. This is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time.